All right, YouTube. This is AJ with Urban Bushcraft NC. Uh, today, I thought I'd do um, kind of like a self-awareness, if you will, uh, survival mentality. Now, most people do have their bug out bags, and I'm pretty sure everybody has at least one of something out of every little pile we have here. Uh, I thought I'd go through some of the importance, most important aspects of your kit the ones that are actually going to do the most for you and you know without having to carry a big old duffel bag with you know everything you could possibly need we're going to cover some of the basics that uh, everybody should have and keep in an accessible area so um, we'll go through those uh, category at a time first category is fire and for me that's a that's a big one you gotta have fire to uh, be able to maintain you know temperatures your body temperature if it's cold outside um, you know you gotta have it to cook clean your water and all that um, this right here is natural it's from a uh, poplar it's the outer bark of a dead poplar um, cedar also works real well this is a natural occurring fiber this is something that you're going to be able to find usually time and time again depending on you know your climate if uh if you're in your climate then you know you can find stuff like this on the on the regular but if you can't store will always help you out get you a uh, cotton balls cotton balls and vaseline those things will ignite right there with a spark from your magnesium bar. This is my EDC. Got my magnesium bar in here. We got some waterproof matches, a small ferro rod, and some more um, cotton balls. This knife goes in conjunction with the magnesium bar. This is one of those metal match. You unscrew the top and you strike it down this little ferro rod right here and this little can contains lighter fluid when you strike it down this uh, the spark ignites the lighter fluid well the sparker in here broke on this little little striker here the the metal that actually strikes the ferro rod broke off so now I just got a little container of lighter fluid but uh, I always have this is my ferro rod for my EDC, I carry this everywhere pretty much. I mean, anywhere that my vehicle or my pack, my vehicle's always in my pack, but you know, or my pack's always in my vehicle. That'd be a hellacious pack, wouldn't it? Um, I always have this with my Condor. This is a Condor Jungle Buoy. This is one of my favorite knives. It's a uh, it's a big, a big blade, but it has a good edge for fine carvings. Um, it's high carbon steel, so it takes the edge real good. Let's see, Condor. It's made in El Salvador. These, this is a good knife. Um, it's full tang. Can beat on it real hard. That's a good one to have. And like I said, this is the main part of my EDC. And as you can see here, we got uh, inner tube Ranger Bands. Um, Dave Canterbury. It's a great idea. I don't know if that was his idea or not, but that's where I got it from. Um, right here is a, uh, a hair, some kind of hairpin. It's got a 30 pound spider wire on it. And here is a can opener. Being in an urban environment, I'm more likely to run across a can than, you know, needing an arrow point. Uh, I got my mini fishing kit, a couple ranger bands, some hot glue, because I do, uh, do practice archery, I do bow hunt, stuff like that. I got, uh, an awl made out of a, uh, made out of an eight penny nail. Got my needle. 
for sewing. Uh, in case anything happened, I usually wear this around my neck. I got my striker here in case for some reason I lose my knife. But I always carry my mora. That's my backup. It's always around my neck. Here I have a preset, um, a pre-made fishing line with 30 pound spider wire. That's a couple of weights and the hooks on top of it. Wrapped it up with some black tape to keep it all secure. Um, you can see there I have some more uh, spider wire wrapped with black tape. Um, that's just regular brown electrical tape for you know uh, band-aids or whatnot. And there's some more black tape. Like I said, those are my EDC, and around here we do have, you know, a good amount of ponds and streams and creeks and whatnot to fish in. So I always got some kind of food, um, food procurement devices in place. Um, they can also be used, you know, all out of water. Um, you can use them to snag animals instead of hooking a fish in the mouth. You can hook it in the skin you know and worst case scenario and have it there waiting for you you know if it didn't break the line chew its way off etc etc that would be one way to adapt this to an urban environment you know maybe catch rats cats anything like that now fire being one of the most important aspects of survival should also be the easiest. There's no need to go out and make a, you know, a hand drill or a bow drill. If it's a sunny day and you walk through the woods, you know, nothing's, it's not raining, you're not wet, why not just and have a fire? I mean, of course, you can take some of this charred cattail down or some of these um, cotton balls in here and hit it with a ferro rod. But, I mean, why not get you one of these cheapos? If you're going to buy a lighter, I suggest you get a big. They, uh, they hold up the wind a little bit better, and they're a little more quality made. So, I mean, if it's in the bottom of your bag and, you know, you drop it or stumble or whatever, it's not going to break as easy as the little cheapos are. You can get, like, three of these for a dollar, or you can get one good one for a dollar. And in conjunction with, you know, some uh, tissue paper, nature calls all the time. Why not have, you know, a little tissue on hand? And if you do need a fire, boom, there's a quick one right there. Um, like I said, this is cattail down and cotton balls. I got a little cap for it. I wrap it up with some duct tape. That's pretty watertight. This goes back to your quick fire. I mean, you can take this, boom, hit it with the lighter, set your bottle on top. Quick, easy, no, no more nip. Second most important category of survival and uh, being self-reliant is covering. If you're gonna have your, a, a bug out bag, you gotta have some kind of cover. You know, if the car breaks down and you decide to walk, a downpour comes. I mean, you got to be covered somehow. We got these black, real thick um, drum liners, trash bags. You can go get your cheap little hooded poncho. I mean, yeah, you're not going to need it to last forever, hopefully. But of course, the better it is, the longer it's going to last, the better suited it's going to be for your needs. Uh, a cheap tarp is probably going to be the best way to go for any uh, environment really. Um, as being in an urban environment might not want the silver with blue. Um, probably best to get a, you know, a brown and a green or a brown and a silver because you know being in an urban environment you got to be covert everybody's gonna know what you're up to they're gonna want what you got um, that's another aspect of the um, 
mentality that needs to be that you need to pick up on because somebody out there is not going to be as fortunate as you next on the list would be cutting tools it is a fundamental piece in survival in itself without a cutting tool it would be hard to do any kind of animal cleaning cooking of any sorts where you would have to prepare meat um, it would be hard to even make traps no. they come in all shapes and sizes this, uh, this is a cheapo survival kit knife it's got the matches and the sewing kit in it and then these are some homemade ones that I made this is more of a hacking and chopping tool and this one is for like skinning mainly you can get that edge on it and work that skin uh, but it's also a really comfortable knife for uh, like shaving down making um, fire sticks um, now this right here is probably a little bit overkill unless it's like the zombie apocalypse or something then yeah that would be a good one to have but uh as far as your your fine carvings and like whittling figure fours and stuff like that this is going to be easier to handle but you're not going to get the chopping and mangling power of this that's why i like the condor because it's a it's a good medium you can do your fine carvings i've cleaned animals with it i've cleaned fish with it made traps with it that's a good medium for me um, next on the list would be cordage um, you know right off hand everybody everybody loves their paracord but uh it can get a little costly and you know you might not need all that tensile strength you know for your shelter building or you, you know say you just needed to lash together a tripod or something why waste your 550 and you can go get this uh, Mason's line I mean you can get a roll like this for like two dollars it's it's got about that much on it probably but I mean two dollars compared to oh, what is this like uh, this is about seven dollars for like 25 feet so I mean if 25 feet yeah you can break it down you got seven strands etc etc but why waste your money and save this for something you know you could double it up for repelling or heavy loads something like that and just use this for your light loads um the bank line that's this is always great to have i mean it's inexpensive this is, you can get the thick stuff or you can get some thin stuff um they both have their individual bests i like carrying the thin stuff it comes in a smaller roll last well not necessarily last but uh definitely the best uh containers containers are the hardest to procure in a self-reliance situation in the wilderness but not necessarily as hard in an urban environment I mean for instance tin cans duh, they come in all different shapes and sizes um, everything from a gallon to a pint um, aluminum beer bottles I mean they're they're flimsy but uh, they'll do in a pinch personally the best thing to have is going to be something like the uh, stainless steel guy at bottle I mean this thing you can't dent it well I mean you can but not with your finger it's it's going to be your best bet it's a 32 ounce so automatically there I mean you're taking the aspect of the resellable bottle and I mean that's that's pretty equal in size but uh, 
neither one of those or both of those together are still not going to last as long as this and then, I mean for five bucks you can go to Walmart yeah I said Walmart you can go to Walmart pick you up one of these little mess kits um, you can get the aluminum for five dollars you can spend the extra five and get a stainless steel one which is going to last you a lot better and uh, it's not going to be easy to poke holes in it like this aluminum one uh, the only thing you got to cook with is your knife and say you try scrape, scratching something off the bottom like something sticking you can cut that real easily I mean that's it just, it's not going to stand up like stainless now in an urban environment um, these right here are probably going to be a lifesaver for you because think about it when everything goes down trash is going to pile up rotten food uh, you know in the worst case scenario bodies um, you know starving animals all that you're going to have lots of rats rats mice um, quick meal you know hit a little bit of bait on there or uh, you can even put it up against the wall and kind of tunnel them into it block it off to where they have to run over it pop you got them as soon as they hit that trigger now if you uh, if you have water nearby you know fishing ponds lakes streams rivers anything like that these yo-yo fishing reels they're uh, about two dollars a piece but that's a uh, passive hunting and gathering I mean this is gonna sit here and work for you while you're off you know setting your your rat traps or your snares or whatever um you know, if you plan on you know big game hunting or you know stalking and tracking and things like that a little monocle that could uh that can greatly improve your odds and you see what you're sneaking up on before it sees you you know so you Here's a few little uh, ideas for the uh, urban environment. If, um, you know, SHTF does happen, you know, WROL, um, might need access into some locked buildings, shelter, food, medicine, etc. A little um, pry bar could, uh, could mean life or death inside an urban situation. Uh, as long with a couple other tools, you never know. Get you a Phillips and a flathead. I mean, that could also be a prying surface for you. As well as, you know, it might need to take out a car battery and a headlight and make a lamp or something. I mean, urban environment's a little different than uh, wilderness survival. Um, also, a flashlight. I mean, unless zombies are out or something in you know, you know an environment where you don't want to be seen at night of course you don't use it but uh you know in conjunction with your pry bar at night you're trying to get in somewhere uh if the power grid's off uh that flashlight's a must have as well as um some pain relievers you know some aspirin some ibuprofen or something you're gonna get tired of walking, you know, if you got a, a heavy bag or you know, inappropriate shoes, anything like that. Um, you know, you fall, whatever. It's pain relievers. Uh, they don't weigh hardly nothing. Put a house out of that right there. That's a survival kit in itself. Um, Band aids. You can make cordage. Um, you can put them side by side and tape them long ways and make a sheet if you had to you know some kind of covering um, you can also use it for signaling they got all kinds of bright brilliant colors um, for signaling like if you're on a rooftop signaling a helicopter you know you put you a big X on something um, X is like a distress signal 
It's a, it's like an international distress signal. Uh, means need help or unable to go on one of the two, and um, so maybe some orange or a bright bright green, um, pink, yellows, anything like. That. So once you decide what your kit is going to consist of, of course you're going to need something. Any bag will do. A grocery bag, if you know need be. This is just an old medicine bag laying around, or makeup bag or something laying around the house. Um, Got to be mobile with it. So I mean, keep it, keep it uh, in an area easily accessible. Um, you know, let the family know where it is. If it's more of a bug out bag, um, make one up for. Um, individuals in your family if they have special needs or special medications or um, you know breathing treatments or you know if they need dust masks gloves um, stuff like that you can personalize them for individuals in your house um, you know get you a, a get you an old book bag from Goodwill or Walmart or somewhere and uh, write the names on them you know that way you know, hey, this has got so-and-so's medication and breathing treatments, or... Okay, so of course the bag that I found, the zippers were busted on it. So, um, picked up this cheap, uh, little backpack from, uh, Goodwill. And it snaps in. Um, it's got plenty of storage room in it. You're gonna need extra room, um for scavenging, you know, food, water, other um, immediate supplies. So this is going to be our urban backpack. And this is it. This is our urban bushcraft bag. Um, everything is fairly inexpensive. Uh, most of it I already had laying around because I've been into this thing for a while. But, um, yeah, this is AJ for uh, Urban Bushcraft NC. I uh, hope you enjoy it, and I'll see you in the next one.